Assalamu alaikum everyone, I hope you're all doing well. Welcome to the third episode of Bridge the Gap. In our today's lesson, we'll be talking about the idea of significant figures and to how many significant figures are we supposed to give our answer in questions of A-level physics. So let's begin. Before we get to the very question, how many significant figures should we answer, we need to know that whether a number has two or three or four or five or any number of significant figures. So there are three basic rules that are laid down to decide the number of significant figures in any numeric value. The first rule says that any non-zero digit that's from one to nine is always a significant figure. This means that if it's 73, there are two significant figures. If it's 215, there are three significant figures. If it's 7,236, there are four significant figures. So that's how you find out the number of significant figures. So all non-zero numbers, they're always significant. But the problem comes when there is a zero in your number. Sometimes this zero is significant and sometimes it's not. So the second rule gives us a brief insight on whether a zero is going to be significant or not. The rule goes like this, any zero sandwiched between two significant figures is significant. That is, if there is a zero between two significant figures, that zero is also going to be significant. For example, it's written over here 801. This 8 and 1, they're both significant. So the zero written between them, which is sandwiched, is significant, so we have three significant figures over here. If you look at 7003, 7 and 3, they're both significant figures, they're non zero digits, no? So this zero and this zero over here, it's also significant, so we have four significant figures over here. Then over here, 4056. Now 4 and 5 are significant figures, so the zero over here is also significant. So this makes it again four significant figures. Afterwards, 790. So the seven and nine, they're both significant. But the zero is not sandwiched between them. It's at the end. So the zero is not significant. So I only have two significant figures over here. Similarly, eight. Eight is a significant figure. But the three zeros written at the end, they're not sandwiched. See, so these three zeros, they are not significant. So only have one significant figure in 8,000. However, there are four digits, but still this one significant figure. Then 7,400. Again, seven and four significant figures. These two zeros, they're not sandwiched. Hence, they're not significant. So I have two significant figures over here. Now, the third rule helps us to find out whether a zero written after a decimal place or in a decimal number, whether it's going to be significant or not. So, the rule goes like this. A final zero, that is, the zero written at the end, or trailing zeros. Trailing zeros are basically the zeros written at the end of a number. It's like, for example, in 790, the zero is a trailing zero. In 8,000, these three zeros are trailing zeros. These two zeros are trailing zeros. Zero is written at the end of the number. After the decimal place are significant. Means if a zero is written after a decimal place, and if it's a trailing zero, it's going to be significant. Otherwise, not. Let's practice this rule on a few numbers. 73.0. The zero is a trailing zero because it's written at the end of the number. And it's written after decimal place. Remember, this trailing zero rule, it's only applicable after decimal places, not before decimal places. Right? So the zero over here, it's a trailing zero. It's written after a decimal place. So yeah, it's significant. So we have three significant figures away. Similarly, 75.00. Both of these zeros are significant. Why? They are trailing zeros after a decimal place. So I have four significant figures over here. Seven and five are already significant. So these two zeros are also significant. Okay, they are trailing zeros after a decimal place. 76.30. Again, a trailing zero. 
significant four significant figures 70.530 this zero is a trailing zero it's significant this zero over here it's actually sandwiched between two significant figures seven and five so this one's significant as well so we have five significant figures away then 880.07 this zero over here is not a trading zero but the these two zeros they are sandwiched between two significant figures eight and seven so both of these zeros are basically sandwiched between two significant figures so they are significant as well so i have five significant figures over here then we have thousand point zero zero now these two are trailing zeros my dear ones so they are significant what about these three zeros they will be significant not because they're trading zeros but they are sandwiched between two significant figures because this one is a significant figure and the zero written after the decimal place it's also significant because it was a trading zero so this one and this zero they are both significant therefore all the three zeros written between them are also significant so this number has six significant figures similarly option the uh, the part g that we have over here it's 700.070 this zero is significant because it's a trading zero the rest of the three zeros they are significant because they are sandwiched between the two sevens that we have so all of the zeros in this number are significant so we have again six significant figures 60.801 this zero and this zero they're both significant why they're sandwiched although none of them is a trading zero but yet this zero over here it's sandwiched between eight and one hence it became significant this zero over here is sandwiched between six and eight hence it's significant so we have again five significant figures then 0 0.001 this zero written before a decimal place it's not significant because it's not sandwiched between two significant figures and hence these two zeros are also not significant because number one they're not trailing zeros secondly they're not sandwiched between two significant figures if it would have been one then these two zeros would have been significant because they would have been sandwiched between two significant figures right now it's a zero over here this zero is not significant therefore neither of the three zeros are significant it's just one which is significant. So I have one significant figure over here. Then 0, 0, 0.01. Again, not significant because not sandwiched. After the decimal place, this zero is not significant either. Why? Not a trailing zero. Neither is sandwiched. Hence, only this one is a significant figure. So we have one significant figure in this number too. Then 0 0.010, hmm, a trailing zero, significant. This zero, not significant. This zero, not significant. Why? Not sandwiched. Neither of them are trailing zeros. So we have this one as a, uh, as a significant figure and the zero at the end as a significant figure. So we have two significant figures over here. So I hope this exercise gives you a brief idea of whether a zero is going to be significant or not. And if you have this thing clear, let's move on to the rule. How are we going to give our answer? Well, in how many number of significant figures should the answer be? The rule is simple. Your answer should be in the least number of significant figures as in the data. That is, look at the number of significant figures that are present in your data. For example, I have three variables. A has a value of 21.5, B has a value of 1.4, C has a value of 20.40. So A over here has three significant figures. B has two significant figures. C has four significant figures. Why? A trailing zero and a zero sandwich between two significant figures. So both of these zeros are significant. Therefore, we have four significant figures. 
So if I calculate the value of y, which is a square times b, we calculate that. We have 21.5 squared times 1.4. This gives me 647.15. So if I look at the number of significant figures right now over here, they're basically five significant figures. But I'm not supposed to give my answer in five number of significant figures. I need to look at the rules. The rule says give your answer to the least number of significant figures. The least number of significant figures are two. So I need to give my answer in two significant figures. Because the equation that I used had A and B. A had 3SF, B had 2SF, so I need to give my answer in 2SF. So I need to round it off. The value is going to be 650. That's two significant figures. No decimal place whatsoever. Similarly, if I go for Z, the equation is C over B. C is 20.40. B is 1.4. So if I look over here, the equation goes like 20.40 divided by 1.4. It's 14.57143. There are a lot of number of significant figures right now over here. So if I see, it's like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 significant figures. But I'm not supposed to give my answer in 7 significant figures. I need to give my answer in the least number of significant figures as in my data. So Z was calculated using C and B. C had 4. B had only 2 significant figures. So I'm going to give the value of Z in 2. That's it. So this is going to be 15. This is 2SF. So that's how you're going to give your answer. Look at your data, see the least number of significant figures they are, and give your answer in those number of significant figures. There is an option you can go one significant figure more in case of mixtures, but it's more preferred to actually give your answer to the least number of significant figures. So I hope this lecture will be helpful to you guys and when you'll be solving questions in your A-level physics, you will be giving your answer to the right number of significant figures. Take care, guys. Love is.